Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending April 16th. This first article was sent by my friend Gary J. Solar cells will be made obsolete by 3D rectennas aiming at 40 to 90 percent efficiency. This is from Genesis is nanotech.wordpress.com. A new kind of nanoscale rectenna, half antenna and half rectifier can convert solar and infrared into electricity plus be turned to nearly any other frequency as a detector. Um, it's a sound principle. I mean, since the days of crystal radio, you can pick up radio waves and use them to not only uh, listen to the radio, but actually provide its own amplification from the power and the signal received itself. All you basically need is just a tuned circuit, an antenna, and a diode to rectify it. So these things are made uh, to the nano scale, but right now it says right now efficiency is 1%, but Professor Baratunde Kola and colleagues at the Georgia Institute of Technology convincingly argue that they can achieve a 40% broad spectrum efficiency, double that of silicon and more even than multi-junction galenium arsenide at one-tenth of the cost of conventional solar cells with an upper limit of 90% efficiency. I don't know, that's bragging a lot when you've only started at 1% that you're going to get up to 90% efficiency, but let's say they even equal the efficiency or maybe exceed the efficiency of silicone cells. You know, that'd be another thing to look at. Uh, there's a, a picture of it down below, too. I'll, I'll actually post it up here besides uh, where they kind of show basically how it works. And then they show the graph lines in the bottom where you got the, the wave lines. And then at the top you have smooth DC. I'm not really convinced that that is the way it looks rather than maybe an oversimplification. If it's a diode structure, it's only a half wave rectifier, so it would still be pulse DC waves, but I guess that's being a little picky, but uh, underneath the picture it says schematic of the components making up the optical rectenna carbon nanotubes capped with metal oxide metal tunneling diode. So working on antennas to replace for uh, um, picking up uh, energy, looking for antennas to replace silicone solar panels possibly. Hey, you know, the more ways that you can produce electricity from sunlight, the better chance you have of maybe come up with something new and innovative. And this next one was sent by Peter L. And this is also posted in the TDD group. And I noticed a lot of places got the headlines wrong. They posted something like, and this is ABC News, so I kind of expected better, but I guess not anymore. I mean, this is the way the news media is. Stephen Hawking and Billionaire team up on 100 million quests to find alien life. No, it is not a quest to find alien life. It's a quest to use cutting-edge engineering to launch these little nanoprobes into space to possibly find habitable planets. They're going to launch hundreds of these probes towards uh, Alpha Centauri, the, the binary star, and see if the planets circling around possibly could harbor life or something like that. And they think because of the small size and using solar sails for propulsion, they have, they're have they close enough to having practical engineering to actually get this thing underway in a few years. And if you can travel at like you know, at least a few percent of light speed, they may be able to make it in a 20-year journey. Now that also means when they get there, since Alpha Centauri is like four and a half light years back, you're going to have to uh, send, wait four and a half years even beyond that when they reach Alpha Centauri. You're going to have to reach, wait four and a half years for any of the probes that make it to send the signal back telling you what the planets are like. And it's going to be a flyby too. These aren't going to land at Alpha Centauri or anything like that. So what they're figuring is during the time period, if they send enough of these little tiny probes, that are small enough, even if they end up losing 80% of them, 90% of them, there will still be you know enough of them around to send some kind of signal back. But um, just the engineering, I think, to get these uh, kind of space traveling trips to other stars done in lifetimes, you know, a human lifetimes instead of, uh, or even let's say several hundred years rather than have it be, you know, generations and generations and maybe thousands of years. Hey, if the engineering can be uh, stretched to its limits to do this, more power to them. So it says astronomers believe an Earth-like planet could exist within the habitable zones of Alpha Centauri, the closest star system to Earth, located 25 trillion miles or 4.37 light years away. And uh, this is some of Stephen Hawking's words themselves. Earth is a wonderful place, but it might not last forever, Hawking said in a statement. Sooner or later, we must look to the stars. Breakthrough Starshot is a very exciting first step in that journey. So, no, he's not going out looking for uh, contact with with aliens. People said, well, wasn't he just a few years ago saying, hey, we shouldn't get in touch with aliens, we shouldn't call out and promote ourselves just in case they come and uh, are not so friendly or whatever. He has not changed his position at all. So I noticed that right away in the headlines. And I'll, I'll give you a, a link to another article that's uh, a little bit more... Um, 
down to earth and a little bit less dramatic too uh, about the same subject too about the nanoprobes and uh, hope you check those out as usual all the links to the articles will be below and last up this is be this will be from Anthony M and also posted to the TDD group I've seen this uh, uh, another show on uh, National Public Radio they had a show about a guy having his uh, arm through a uh, brain implants he was able to move his arm again he was not able to feel it or get any reception from touch but he could actually by changing his thoughts move his arm and actually grasp stuff well this is kind of similar this is from Engadget.com flexible spinal cord implants will let paralyzed people walk doctors dream of helping the paralyzed walk through implants that stimulate their spinal cords but current technology makes that impossible this stuff the stiff unnatural gadgets usually end up damaging or inflaming nervous tissue over time Swiss researchers may have solved this problem once and for all through their Bendy e dura implant. It combines flexible electronics, cracked gold, electronic tracks, and fluidic microchannels, whatever all that is, to uh, make it uh, work properly and not end up uh, giving any kind of pain or suffering or damage. And paralyzed rats in lab tests could both walk again after a few weeks and keep their wearing and keep wearing their implants after two months. And down below you'll be able to see a video to check out where it talks about the paralyzed rat being able to work again. And uh, one of the developers talks about it, too. So anyway, that's about it for this week. Thanks, everybody, for sending the material in and for posting the material on the Dumpster Divers group. If you're not a member of the Dumpster Divers group on Facebook, please join. There'll be a link below for you to come, and we would love to have you on the group. Post, uh, enjoy science, all kind of sciencey goodness, and take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.